Hey bio fans, Anya here from the Biography Wrap, and today we are going to explore the life of David Hugens through the movie Love and Saucers, directed by Brad Abrams. The story begins in David's house, in which he lives alone, and he confesses there that he lost his virginity at the age of 17 to a female extraterrestrial being, and that it is all that he can tell the audience about. David Hugens is a 72-year-old artist who lives in Hoboken, New Jersey. His paintings are primarily about his life, which he tells he lived the same way as depicted in his paintings, but no one believes him. He is not mental or in any other way sick or in, on any medication. In fact, he says he has never been sick a single day in his life. David reads out a journal from his diary in which he tells about the day he lost his virginity. He saw two glowing eyes looking upon him, but he was not afraid of them. Instead, he thought of him as friendly and followed him to a place where others were like him, including one woman. They ordered David to remove his clothes and lie down. They touched his body, making him aroused after which the woman eased upon him and experienced brief sex as he was just a boy who couldn't last that long. David starts by telling his daily routine, which includes drinking coffee, writing a script he has recently been working on, his part-time job at the deli. After returning from the job, he usually paints and sometimes meditates to calm down his thoughts. He tells about the dreams he always had but doesn't understand, and as curious as he was, he uses the I Ching to understand the meaning of his dreams. He says that he has always enjoyed impressionistic art and it was the motivation that drives him towards painting. He also enjoyed science fiction and so he shows his collection, including thousands of science fiction horror movies on VHS tapes. He shares details about his childhood where he experienced his first encounter with aliens. He grew up in Georgia and it was of all farmland where he lived, with vast areas having very few populations. His family owned a farm where he and his siblings went to do daily chores and often found arrowheads lying around in the fields. He also shares that he had a very strange childhood as he used to see and hear things that his family couldn't. He was eight years old when he first encountered the beings. He was playing at the base of a tree when suddenly he heard a voice saying its name out loud. He followed the voice to the woods where a small hairy guy was standing and his eyes were glowing. Looking at him, he felt for just a second as if he was in the eyes of the guys looking at him. This freaked him out and so he ran from there. In the subsequent encounter, he went out of the barn to get a baseball and heard a noise coming from the other side. Upon reaching, he saw a giant insect-like being that resembled a praying mantis. For an eight-year-old child, this was very frightening, so he screamed as soon as he saw it. And as he was about to run, the being sprayed him with this grayish liquid which evaporated as soon as he got away from him. One day, he went to a friend's house and decided to go through the field. While going, he got the feeling that somebody was watching him. After looking around, he saw a head rising up from behind the bushes. It was bright gray with big eyes, and as soon as he saw the head, he fainted and fell to the ground. While unconscious, he hears three beeps, and when he woke up, he was standing in chest-deep weeds without any idea how he got there. Once again, he sees eight to nine of those gray guys falling to the ground and running straight towards him, and he runs away. But one night, when he saw them coming from his window into his room, he decided to listen to them. They took him outside and then floated to the sky in some kind of bright and oval-shaped aircraft. There, many others, like the gray guys, were there. But this time, he also saw an alien woman in a blue coat. She held a rod in her hands, and as she came towards him, a gray guy held him from behind, and she inserted the rod into his nose, making it bleed. When he expressed that it hurt him, she looked into his eyes and made him feel free of pain. His encounters became frequent, and so he knew every one of them. Gray guys seemed workers to him, and a tall, thin being with a knob on the back of his head seemed to be their leader. And the name of the female being was Crescent. He explains his virginity loss that he saw Crescent sitting under a tree, and then she started coming towards him, which aroused him sexually. 
So he experiences sexuality for the very first time on the forest ground. At the climax, he passed out while seeing her eyes, and when he woke up, didn't remember a thing about it. He says that he didn't like Georgia and had always wanted to get out of there to pursue his passion for painting and art. When he got to know about the Art Students League, he decided to leave Georgia. At 19, David wrote a letter to his parents and went home while his parents were there. Otherwise, they would have stopped him. Even after leaving Georgia, David continuously had dreams that he thought were real. But then due to obvious reasons, he convinced himself that it was not. It was very frustrating for him as he didn't know what to think anymore. One day, he decided if this is real, he should buy some flowers for her as every morning, she whispered in his ears that we'll be back tonight. The following day, the flowers were gone and then it hit him that it was real all along. He explains his daily encounters with Crescent as a sort of romantic. They had a fair amount of sex every day. He describes them having sex in only one position as he was basically kind of paralyzed at the moment. She came toward him, so he had nothing to do other than get aroused by her. He considered Crescent as his girlfriend. Although not a girl, he felt that they were in some sort of romantic relationship with each other. One day, Crescent came to him very stressed out, telling him that she had a baby from David, but it was dying. She forces her to take him to wherever the baby was, and although he was not allowed there, she took him. The baby was in Crescent's arms, not moving at all. But it started moving as soon as David touched it. Then the insect is being taken to a room full of babies. And when he asked whose babies they were, to his surprise, all these babies were from David's, from every time he had sex with Crescent. Whenever David had an encounter with the beans, he always used to forget about everything afterwards. In August 1987, the beings had left David alone for a very long time now. During this while, he got married to a girl and also had a child named Michael from her. But he always felt the presence of something beside him staying in his home. He started acting paranoid, and when he heard about Bud Hopkins, a researcher about extraterrestrial beings, he went on to buy one of his books. And upon reading, he found all the things that happened to him were written in this book too. Every memory of those beings which he had forgotten came rushing back to him. All of those memories at once traumatized him, but he decided to paint all his memories, and when he did, he felt a sense of relief. And from then onwards, he just paints and paints about them. He gets divorced several months after reading Bud's book. David's son, Michael, along with the owner of the deli that David works in and his neighbor are interviewed and they all say that although they have never experienced anything like that, they completely believe David's side of the story as he remembers everything in such detail and his paintings tell his story very beautifully. The founder of Space, an organization for extraterrestrial encounters and the professor of an esteemed university also give the interview sharing their views about David's experiences and said the same thing. He was telling what was the truth for him as loud as possible he could. Those paintings that he does are not mere imagination or science fiction. They are inspired by what he actually experienced. On the day of the exhibition of his paintings, David feels very excited to see the look on people's faces and listen to their views, opinions, and questions about his encounters. When asked, David tells that he wants people to take with them after the expedition. The mere possibility of a different reality that they believed in the truthfulness of his story and his paintings and that only would be enough for him. At the end of the day, he is happy to answer everyone's curious questions about his experiences and the calmness he got just by sharing his visions with everybody else. It was a perfect day for David. That's it from the movie Love and Saucers. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. Let me know what you think of this true story and make sure to check out this next one.